This conference will now be recorded. Yeah. So today we'll be understanding more the technical aspects of a case study. Okay. So this we have seen right. So creating a case type is nothing but creating a class in the background. Okay. So creating a process means creating a, a flow in the background. So what you are trying to do is you are trying to configure your case type with all necessary rules we have created fields fields are nothing but properties in the background so if you wanted to design a screen so we have clicked on the step first step and we have clicked on configure view once we click on configure view once we add fields to that particular view so a screen got created okay so what is happening in the sense in the background in the background so system has created a few action system has created a section all these things were created in the background itself so do you, you remember right so if you wanted to create a screen what are the steps first we have to create the properties adding the properties to the section later section is added in the flow action after that creating the flow on the assignment outgoing connector so we have added the flow action so all these things are automated in the background by using case designer okay so technically a key, one case type is nothing but one class in the background one case type is equal to one class now just wanted to understand one more thing is case type a rule or not see flow is a rule section is a rule properties are rules so what is case type so case type is also a rule understand this Similar to similarly, we create flows, properties, sections, flow actions, right? We have created a number of rule types. Similarly, case type is also a rule type. Case type is a rule type, and its instance class is rule obj case type. Rule obj case type is the instance class of a case type. So, creating a case type is nothing but you are creating an instance for this particular rule obj case type class so let's go ahead and let's see that let's see the class rule obj case type class so click on this class once you click on this class it will list down all the list of case types so these are the case types so this is the case type that we have created okay so now what is case type and what is case designer see case type is a rule case type is basically a rule so now if you wanted to see this is not the rule this is not the case type rule so if you wanted to open the case type rule from the actions just click on open so the one which you are seeing right this is case type rule form so if you create a property so you have to create the property in a property rule form right if you create a flow flow rule form if you create a section section rule form similar to that case type rule form is this so in order to configure this case type so prpc has introduced something called as case designer case designer is a, a framework which is written for configuring the case type you understand this point you you are trying to understand this right see case type is a, a rule to design that rule to configure that rule so prpc has introduced case designer so directly from the case type rule form also you can add you can add the stages see if you go to stages so you can directly add the stages primary stages and alternate stages so go to one of the stages so these are the stages right once you click on the stage so you can add processes you can configure the same thing on the rule form you can configure the same things on the rule form now the question is why case designer was introduced the case designer is a framework which is used for the purpose of configuring the case type so directly we can come to the rule form and we can do it right we can configure it right now why why we should go to case designer 
and open the case type and why, why should we configure all these things? Now you got my question or not? No, Karthik. No. Okay. So you're you're just asking why do we need a designer when you could when you do not actually need a framework, but you can do it using that rule framework. Rule form, yeah. Rule exactly. Form. So directly we can come to case type rule form and we can configure the case type, right? Why there should be a designer, case designer to configure this? I feel it is easy uh, while using the designer. Okay. Because configurations are a bit simpler. Though you don't have any technical knowledge, but still you can configure your case type. That's the intention. Basically, it is to overall the configure simplify the configuration process of a case type. See here, if you go to the rule form, see. Do you understand anything here? No. So if you go to case designer, so you can do it. So you can visually see the stages, process, steps, okay, data model, views, settings, and all the stuff. So whatever you are doing on the case designer, you can do the same thing on the rule form also. There are a couple of things where you can do via case designer, but not on the case type. Say for example, configure view. Configure view. You can do it via case designer, but you cannot do it via rule form, case type rule form. Okay. So what you should understand is case type is also a rule. Is also one of the rules. So its instance class is rule OBJ case type. So let's try to understand the clipboard structure of the case type. Let's open the clipboard. So case type stages, rule OBJ, case type, see here. Rule OBJ case type is the instance class of case type, right? So under this case type stages, so you have all the details of a case type. Okay. So expand this. So whatever the things which are associated for the case type, so all the pages are there within that. Okay, so now if you wanted to go to stages, if you wanted to see the data which is there on the stages, so it's a PY stages. If you wanted to see about the alternate stages, PY alternate stages. Okay, so let's try to go to PY stages. So expand this PY stages. So how many stages we have configured? We have configured four stages. So you can see those four stages here. PY stages of one, PY stages of two, three, and four. So if you click on this PY stages of one, so what is the name? Stage ID is primary one, your stage name is apply leaf. So this is the ID which got created by the system. This ID is created by the system. Your stage name, your uh, stage type. So what are all the, the metadata which is corresponding to the stage? So is residing on this particular case type stages dot py stages of one page. Okay, if you drill down further. So we have py processes. So expand this PY processes. How many, how many process we have? We have only one process, right? So the process is nothing but embed dash stage process. This is the instance class of a, a process. So PY label and the leave details, flow name and the leave details. So if you wanted to have the page reference, so you can go, this is the page reference for this. Okay, so process, okay, the case type is an instance, I mean, the instance class of a case type is rule OBJ case type. Similarly, the instance class of a, a process is embed dash stage process. Okay. So in this way, you have to explore all the pages corresponding to the case type. So whatever you configure on this, whatever you do on the case type, so the data is there in K 
case type stages. So, so all the details can be found in this particular page. Okay, so this is the clipboard reference page. Now, let's go back. So creating a case type, system will create a class in the background, right? So let's go to that class, case type class. So leave application. So this is the case type class which got created by the system. Okay, so now we understood this. This what what type of class is this? Concrete. Concrete. So it is a concrete class because we are creating instances for this particular class. All right. Next. So to which table all the instances of this particular class will store? So basically, I wanted to understand the table to which this particular class is pointed to. Work table to the work table. Okay, it's the work table. See, you need not to open the rule form also. See here, this is work class, right? IBS hyphen VH insurance hyphen work. This is the work class. And from this work class, leave application is inherited. By seeing the name of this particular class, so leave application is inheriting from the work class. So work class is a class group. If a class extends from a class group, so this class, leave application class, will belongs to that particular class group. It belongs to a class group. So which class group? Work class. So work class is pointing to the work table. So leave application also will point to the work table. So all the instances of the case will store in the work table. So do a right click. Click on the direction. So it's a concrete class. It is created in the version, latest version. So this belongs to a class group. What is the class group name? The class group name is the work class. Okay. So this is the class inheritance. We'll come back to this. Press connection. Okay. This is the work class, which is there in Pega data. Pega data database. Close. Okay. Now let's concentrate on class inheritance. Now you should, you guys should tell what is the class inheritance of this particular leave application, leave application class. So first we'll see about the pattern inheritance. The checkbox is enabled. Checkbox is enabled means the pattern inheritance is applied. So this is this class is leave application class. Now tell me. So what is the immediate immediate parent of leave application class? Work. Work class. So how you are seeing that it is work class? But mm -hmm. this new application class, you're saying work class is the immediate pattern parent. How you're seeing this? If you take out the class name, leave application, then the parent okay. will be the work class. Okay. So pattern means you have to see the pattern of the class name. So leave application, right? So the next pattern is the work class, right? The work class. Okay. So I'll write the work class here. So for work class, what is the pattern parent? VH insurance. Okay. VH insurance, which is nothing but the division class, right? This one. Right. 
for VH insurance. What is the class? Here in class. This is all right. IVS, which is the organization class. So this is the path. This is the path of which path? Part and inheritance path. Right. Now, guys, so far we have created most of the rules in the work class. Right? We have created so many rules, right? So go back and if you see in the work class, so we have created a number of rules. Now, guys, tell me in this leave application, can I access all the rules which are there in the work class or not? Yes, you can. Hmm? Yes, sir. Yes, we can. So now your work class is acting like a framework. Okay, so from this, after leave application, you wanted to create apart from leave application case type. So you, you wanted to create uh, something time sheets, time sheets case type. Okay, so you wanted to create something another case type. So your work class will act like a framework. So what are all the things which are there as a generic you can you can create in the work class and specific to case type you can create the I mean, necessary infrastructure in that particular case type. We assume that all the case types require customer details. Then you will create customer details in the work class and you will use it. Right. So if you create a number of case types, a number of different classes will be created. It follows the same structure. So it will be inherited from the work class itself. Even if you create 100 case types, so 100 case types will be inherited from pattern inherited from the work class. 100 case types is equal to 100 new cases. Sorry, 100 new classes, which will be pattern in inherited from the work class. Okay. Now, this is about your pattern. Now, let's try to understand the direct inheritance. I'll open the rule form. Now tell me what is the direct inheritance class? Oh. Sure. Can you see this? Can you see something where there is a placeholder for parent class directed? But is this the is this the direct class? That is what I am confused. Oh, yeah, it is direct inheritance, right? Parent class directed. So they have given some name. What is that name? IBS VH Insurance Hyphen Work. So what is that? It's a work class. Work dash. It's a work class. So what did you get from this? What class means? Hmm. It's the same parent. So, work class. Okay. So now tell me from this, what is the directed parent? Work this cover dash, work this, and the red base class. Yes, it is work dash cover dash work dash and it read base class. See what it is saying is from this is if you have a class as a directed class, so whatever the class, I mean direct it will follow only the directed path. See, this work class has both pattern inheritance and directed direct inheritance, right? So in the direct inheritance, you have given the work class, which means that 
follow the direct inheritance of this particular class is what it says. So when I spoke about inheritance, I told you right. If, if there is a parent class, see here, leave application is the pattern parent of your work class. Work class has both pattern parent and direct parent. So leave application will not inherit direct parents. If you see here, this is the structure, right? Actual structure. Work class has work dash cover dash also. So no. So work class has pattern inheritance and direct inheritance. So leave application. Do you think that leave application from this hierarchy, leave application will inherit work dash cover dash related work dash cover dash as the parent class uh, parent class for this leave application from this hierarchy? No, cut. Hello. No, it will not. Why? Because it it is going for pattern inheritance. Pattern inheritance will go all the way to the top before. Exactly. So if the relation between the two classes is pattern, then the entire hierarchy is pattern. So if the relation between here work and leave application, what is the relation? What type of relation? Pattern inheritance. Then it will apply only pattern inheritance class inherited classes, not the direct inherited classes. So for that reason, work dash cover dash will not come as a part of this inheritance structure. Now, in the direct inheritance, they have given the work class. Now tell me. So do you think that it will go to work dash cover dash or it will go to the organization division classes? It will go to only directed parents. So what's the directed parent here? Work dash cover dash. Again, work dash cover dash has work dash work dash has a thread based class the same thing will be applied here okay now if you go to the direct inheritance so actually it is work class here the placeholder is for work class. Okay, so I can write the work class here. Then I can write work dash for dash work dash net rate base class. So I can ignore that. It is just showing the path. So work dash for dash. Dash cover dash work dash and a great base class. This is the hierarchy structure, inheritance structure of your case type class. Okay. So we will get all the infrastructure which was created in work dash cover dash work dash and a great base class. Similarly, the work class, division class, and the organization class also. Okay. So now let's go ahead. Let's continue. So we'll be working on. Uh, we'll work on a shape. So, okay. so before that. So let's, let's understand about the optional actions first. So we'll complete optional actions first, and then we'll come back to other aspects of the case to study. See here, there is something in the life cycle. There is something called as optional actions. Click on this optional actions. So basically, what is optional? The general meaning of optional. Optional, optional, mandatory, 
it's not mandatory you can skip that until it is not mandatory so you can skip that or you can say that whenever it is required you'll use it otherwise you'll ignore it so no it is not something which is mandatory it is just an optional one so if you will if you want it you'll use it otherwise it is okay Same thing. Optional actions means if you want, there are few actions that you can take on a case. Case means work object. I'm not saying about case type. At runtime, once you run the case type, you will create a case type. Right? So that case, if you want, if you want, you can take few actions. So for example, uh, I wanted to change address of a customer. If customer asks that, I will change it. Otherwise, I will not change it. Okay. So there are few things where you can take optionally. So those optional actions can be configured in this optional actions part. This part optional actions. Okay. So there are two types of actions that you can take. So now you you might be asking question: What type of actions that I can take? What are those actions? So there are two things. One is process, or simply I will call it as a flow, flow action. These two things are exposed. So technically, you can launch a flow. Optional actions under optional actions. So you can launch a flow, you can execute the flow. Assume that that address details change is a is written in the form of a flow assume that okay so you can launch that flow you can change the address and you can complete the flow optionally you can launch them flow action what is flow action what is the container of a flow action section so the, if you want you can launch a flow action flow action will have a section right it will display screen okay so for example you wanted to change the state okay so in a screen, so it will launch that screen and you can change. So basically, there are two rule types that are exposed as a part of this optional actions. So th that are flow and a flow action. You can configure them. So in the case designer context, so what is flow? Flow is nothing but a process. What is an act flow action? It is nothing but we call it as an action. You understand this? So basically, in the optional actions, you can launch a process or an action. So there are you can launch this flow and flow action, that is process and action, based on two different scopes. One is case-wide actions. Next one is stage-wide actions. I'll tell you a simple example. Let's go back to the life cycle. Uh, so I wanted to launch something called as address details change. Address change. So I wanted to have this address change as a part of optional actions. As a part of optional actions, I wanted to do address change. So I will run the I will run this particular case type. So it will create a case. In the case, what is the scope of this address change? Is the question. Say so for example, when do you want it to launch this particular address change? Either in this stage or this stage or this stage or this stage. There are four stages. So now the question is, what is the scope of this particular address change? Is it throughout the case type or is it something which is very much specific to a stage you understand this so the point here is when will you access when will you be able to access this address change at runtime so if you wanted to make that address change as a part of specific to a stage then it is called as stage wide actions if you wanted to access this address change throughout the case, then it is called as case-wide actions. 
you understand this based on the scope of that particular action either it is a process or a flow action so you wanted to define whether it is throughout the case type or specific to a stage if it is specific to a stage we call it as stage wide actions if it is specific to entire case life cycle then we call it as case wide action you understand this or not so no not do you have any questions the theoretical part i'll show you the uh, runtime part yeah it's clear so it is very simple so you can launch a flow or a flow action okay so it should have some scope right that scope is either case wide or a stage one that's it as simple as such okay now if i open the optional actions tab click on this tab now you'll understand this more clearly see here so case wide actions stage only actions these are case wide actions you can add a flow or a flow action if you add here which means that these actions will be accessible throughout the life cycle if you add the same action here it will be accessible only for this particular stage now by default system has always has two actions one is edit details and other one is chain stage these are two actions optional actions these are not flows actions actions means a flow action so by default system has introduced i mean the case type has to these two things edit details and change stage change stage means from one stage you can go to any other stage okay so i'll run this and i'll show you whether i can access this edit details and change stage It is running. Let it run. Let me open the case if again. So this is optional actions, right? So I'll run this.
Oh god, this is taking a good time. Yeah, one more point, guys. So once you launch an action, okay, so you have to complete that. Then only you can make progress in the action life cycle. To launch an action, so the case will progress to further next stage only once you complete this action. Otherwise, you wanted to keep this action open and you wanted to continue your life cycle. No, it, it is not that case. Okay. Okay, anyways, so let's see that time behavior later point of time. So optional actions. So there are two things which are exposed flow flow action. So case wide and stage wide. So if you write under as a stage, so this action would be active only under the stage. Okay. So now where should I launch? How can I launch this? So at runtime, you have actions tab, right? You have actions button on the on the top right side. So you have to click on the actions, and there you will see all your case wide actions. All the active, not only case wide, all the active actions. Say, for example, you are at stage one. The stage one also has three actions, and case wide has two actions. So, totally, you will see five actions. So, directly, you can click on that and you can launch that and you can complete and you can close it. sorry guys so this is launched right so now if you wanted to see the actions optional actions so these are optional right only once you launch so they are active so click on actions see edit details and change stage these two things are coming as a part of case wide optional actions see here edit details and change stage so i launch edit details click on edit details so this is edit details. So basically this is an action, right? This action is nothing, but it's a flow action. So flow action has a section, right? That section is launched. So edit details is a section. If you want, you can change. What does this edit details will do? Edit details is nothing but, so whatever the fields that you have as a part of this particular case type, you can edit them. Understand this? So the logic which is written in this particular edit details is to update the fields of your case type so you can update this basically at any point of time in your case life cycle if you wanted to edit details you can launch similarly i launch a change stage so click on this change stage so this is change stage so currently you are in this stage right so you can choose a stage and you can choose any of the stage you can go to leave rejected hr processing finance processing manager approval any stage you can choose that stage and you can go to that particular stage so this is given as an out of the box similarly if you also find an action that you wanted to specify then you can do this you can add that okay so i i'll create a new action how to create a new action so click on actions collect information once you click on collect information it is nothing but it is the flow action that you wanted to launch Similarly, it is not only the flow action, you can also create process also. Process is nothing but the flow. You can configure the flow and you can launch that flow.
So any questions you have? No questions? For this optional actions, Karthik, like what can we usually, like the change stage, okay, and it's not like we might want to move from one stage to other, another and see, but for edit details, like I couldn't understand like what would be the advantage of having those. Just a minute, just a minute, give me just a minute. Sorry guys. So, so your question is basically what is the purpose of edit details? So change stage you understand edit details. See, you can launch any action. It's example here is an edit details. One of the examples is a part of optional actions that we launched is edit details. So the behavior of edit details is you can change the values of the fields of that particular case type. Say for example, you have 10 fields for your case type. So at any point in your entire life cycle, you can launch it edit date. You can launch the edit details action and you can update the values of those fields. At this point. So that's the purpose of edit details action. Say for example, you have another, you wanted to update only the leave reason. So what you will do? So you will create a new action. So in that action, you will create a section. Section you will add the leave reason as the, the field okay so you do that and you'll update it so very did it is just an example for that i wanted to show the runtime but this is not any other questions so it is very simple so it's not only for the case type. So for flow also, flow rule. If you, go, if you take a flow rule, flow rule also will have optional actions and optional process. If you want, as a part of the flow, if you wanted to launch another flow, another optional process or optional action, then you can do that. So let's come back. So, but anyways, so today we'll conclude this uh, session. So tomorrow what we'll do is, so we'll learn about uh, the parent and child case types. Okay, so dependencies, how the parent case will have a dependency on the child case and all this stuff we'll understand. And also we'll learn one more shape called as approval shape. So manager approval, right? So we'll add one more shape called as approval shape and we'll see how the approval shape will behave. And later 
So we'll create a child case for this particular parent case and we'll see what are all the things which are associated with a parent and the child and what shapes are associated with that. So we have different types of shapes like uh, big shape, create case shape, there are a couple of shapes. So that will, okay. so today we'll conclude here. So if you have any questions, you can ask me as we have time, right? So what you guys do is so try to open the clipboard page of this particular case type and go through each and every page in the case type stages and try to understand. Okay, got it. Okay. So we'll leave for the day. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you.